In this video, we're going to be talking about arc length and the area of a sector. Now the arc length S and the area A of a sector with radius R and central angle theta, which is measured in radians, are as follows. Our arc length equation is S equals R times theta, and our area equals, or is A equals one half the radius squared times theta. So let's go ahead and let's put that into an example to see how it works. So here we have a circle which has a radius of four inches. We're going to find the length of the arc intercepted by the central angle of 240 degrees. So notice in our picture that here we have our 240 degrees and our radius of four. So this is our S. So we're going to use the equation um, using our radius of four inches and finding our arc length, again, intercepted by a central angle of 240, and we're going to find those and plug them into S equals R times theta, or radius times theta. Now, we know that our radius is 4 inches, but what is our theta? Our theta is going to be the 240 degrees divided by 180 degrees, because remember, we're converting it into radians. So we'll divide that and then put the pi next to it. So we have 4 pi over 3. So as we write our equation, we have s equals 4, which is our radius, times theta. Now remember that our theta is what goes right here, which is our 4 pi over 3. So we'll put in our 4 pi over 3, and then we'll multiply that. So if we take 4 times 4 is 16, so we have 16 pi over 3. So here we'll have an s value or an arc length of s equals 16 over 3 pi. Plugging that into the calculator is going to tell us that s is going to be approximately 16.75 inches. Let's talk a little bit about linear and angular speed. Consider a particle moving at a constant speed along a circular arc of radius r. So, like a fan, right? Now, if s is the length of the arc traveled in time t, then the linear speed of the particle is going to be the arc length divided by the time, or s divided by t. Now, we know what s is, because s is r times theta. Moreover, if theta is the angle in radian measure corresponding to the arc length s, then the angular speed of the particle is going to be the central angle divided by time. Linear speed measures how fast the particle moves, and angular speed measures how fast the angle changes. So again, let's make sure that we understand this, that linear speed measures how fast the particle moves, and angular speed measures how fast the angle changes. Okay, so again, linear speed is how fast the particle moves, and angular speed measures how fast the angle changes. Let's take a look at an example to help us understand this just a little bit better. So in this example, we have the blades of a wind turbine are 116 feet long, as shown in the diagram. Now the propeller rotates at 15 revolutions per minute. So it goes around 15 times every minute, right? That's what a revolution is. So we're going to find the angular speed of the propeller in radians per second. Sorry, in radians per minute. So we have angular speed. Now remember that angular speed is A equals theta divided by T. Well, we know that theta is 15 revolutions, and a revolution is 2 pi. So we have 15 of those in every minute. So theta is going to go 30 pi. So in every minute, the angle that's created is 30 pi, and the time is one minute. So we put the one on the denominator, and we can go ahead and plug that in, and that's going to give us 30 pi per minute. So what does that mean? That tells us that we're going 30 pi radians per minute. That's the angle that's created every minute is 30 pi. Now, we're going to be asked to find the linear speed of the tips of the blade. So remember that linear speed is measuring how fast the particle is moving. 
So here, for linear speed, we have linear, linear speed equals s divided by t. And we know that s is r times theta. We know what theta is. We just found it. It's 30 pi. We know what our radius is. It's 116 feet. That's the length of the fan blade. So when we multiply those together, we can put those on the top. We don't even have to multiply them. We can just put our 116 times 30 pi over 1, because remember, time is 1 minute. When we plug that into the calculator, that's going to give us approximately 10,933 feet per minute. So it's moving 10,933 10, feet per minute. That's how fast that particle is moving. So that's an idea of how exactly you would find angular speed and linear speed.